Hey, Teddy here. Um, today I've I've got some sad news I'd like to share with you guys. Um, in case you guys haven't noticed, as of last month, just right after I did my July vlog, um, I've lost two people from my childhood. Well, what I'm trying to share with you is that two people from my childhood both have sadly passed away. And in case you guys are wondering who I'm talking about, well, it's Roger Rees and Satoru Iwata. Now, for those who don't know who those guys are, um, Roger Rees is a Welsh actor who basically did get to play Edward from Return to Neverland, Mr. Hobbs from Garfield the Tale of Two Kitties, not to be confused with the husband of Karen Hobbs and the father of Jack Hobbs and Emily Hobbs. Anyways, Roger Reeves also did Laura Q from the 2006 Pink Panther movie. I'm talking about the one with Steve Martin, Gene Reno, and Kevin Klein. Anyways, um, he was also in the pre Prestige, and Roger Reeves was also in Gargoyles as well. So yeah, um, when it comes to Rogers, I what can I say? People, I love Return to Neverland. Um, I mean, I mean, it's great to see Roger Reed's voice his father in Return to Neverland. Even though it's a shame we haven't seen much of him, but at least we got Jane. That's for sure. And that's my thoughts on him in Garfield: The Tale of Two Kitties. Now let me say this, people. What can I say, people, other than I love Garfield? I mean, when I first heard the news that he, that Roger Rees would star in Garfield, A Tale of Two Kitties, I was, like, feeling happy for him. I mean, it's the same that we've already lost three actors who starred in Garfield, A Tale of Two Kitties. First one would be Ian Abercrombie, who played Smithy in it, he also was at one point the voice of Emperor Palpatine in Star Wars The Clone Wars. And second, we've got Bob Hoskins, who voiced Winston, you know, the, the English Bulldog from Garfield The Tale of Two Kitties. And now we've lost Roger Rees already. And as for the Pink Panther, as my thoughts on the Pink Panther, well, I will say this, that I really enjoyed it. Um, As for my thoughts on... Presage. Haven't seen that movie, but I'd like to. However, um, when it comes to his appearance in Gargoyles, um, I will s say this. Um, I, though it's been a while. I, it's been a while since I've seen the show. However, every time I see it, I tend to enjoy it. I will say. So, anyways, that's my thoughts on Satoru Iwata. Um, <laughs> Satoru Iwata is basically, um, the CEO of Nintendo. Now, what can I say, people? I love playing video games, too. And, um, I remember first hearing about Nintendo. Well, back when I was living in Dobbs Ferry, I've had a Game Boy Advance. And the first ever video game I've played on there was, um, the video game adaptation of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and then Another, and then the, the next two games, games, next two Game Boy Advance games I also did get to play were its version of Star Wars Episode One Jedi Power Battles and Super Mario Advance 2, Super Mario World, in which in there, this is how I first got to know Mario of, more of, and, um, I also, um, have had Fond memories playing the Sonic Advance trilogy as well as the other games in the Super Mario Advance series, and um, I remember around the same time as when it was my eighth birthday. It's where my family did get a Nintendo 64 for. I mean, no, not a Nintendo 64. I meant a Nintendo GameCube in that case. Though um, there were two Nintendo 64 games I did get to play before I first bought a GameCube, consisting of Super Mario 64 and Diddy Kong Racing. 
And, um, when I first bought the Nintendo GameCube, I did have, I did get to play some of the following games, including Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, Sonic Adventure DX, Director's Cut, Walls and Gromit, and Project Zoo, in which is where I first knew about the existence of Walls and Gromit. So anyways, as well as Zapper, um, as well as, um, Mario Superstars Baseball, as well as one of the Mario Party games, um, and, um, I also did get to play, um, and also, I also did get to play The Incredibles, as well as Shrek 2, and, um, and also, I've got another really cool, funny Nintendo story I'd like to share with you guys, um, well, one day, um, I was at school, right? I was reading a Disney Adventures magazine, and when I first saw that, um, that there would be a Cat in the Hat, there would also be a GameCube version of the Cat in the Hat video game, um, I was like, said, however, after seeing that it won't come out, I was feeling disappointed. So instead, I, the only versions I, I was able to get are PC and Game Boy Advance. However, after I bought a, way after I bought a PlayStation 2 for myself, is where I bought the PS2 version of the Cat in the Hat. And, um, other, and then there's, um, other games I also have fond memories playing when I was younger include the video game adaptation of Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, as well as, um, I've also did get to play Mario Kart Super Circuit, and I remember one day, um, when I, when I went, whenever I, when I, there's this, there's this one time where, when I, when, when I, whenever I do get to go to the Edwin's house, um, well, um, there's this one popular video game franchise on Nintendo I first did get to know about when going to the Edwin's house, and that game is Super Smash Brothers. I also have fond memories playing the original Super Smash Brothers at the Edwin's house, and I just want to say this, Edwin family, if you guys are watching this, thank you for um, introducing me to Super Smash Brothers. And, um, anyways, um, another Nintendo video game I'll also have fond memories playing would be... I remember in, in, in 2005, one day I was at Target, I believe. Well, anyways, um, my brother Evan um, did get a Nintendo DS. Which in this case, um, not only did we get its version of Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, but also, but also, some other games as well. Anyways, um, and then, um, but then fast forwarding towards 2008, um, m when my mom and I both just came back here from Florida, well, my dad and, and my brother Evan both just came back here from Maryland, and this is the moment where my dad and my brother would both then get a Nintendo Wii. Two Nintendo Wii's actually, one for me and one for Evan. And the first video game I did get to play in there would be, of course, Lego Star Wars: The Complete Saga. Other Wii games I've also played include Wii Sports, Super Smash Brothers Brawl, um, Star Wars: The Force Unleashed, The Simpsons game, um, and. Uh, by the way, another GameCube game I also have fun when I was younger would be Finding Nemo and Sonic Heroes. I've also, also found when I was playing when I was younger. Anyways, um, um, uh, I also have fond memories playing Mario Super Sluggers and as well as Mario Kart Wii. And, um, but then, when when it was Christmas in 2011, luckily I did get a Nintendo 3DS for Christmas, alongside with four 3DS games consisting of 
Lego Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars, Superstar Racing, I'm talking about the DreamWorks racing game for the Nintendo 3DS anyways, as well as um, Sonic Generations and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time in 3D. Anyways, other Nintendo games I've also played were the, the entire Super Mario Brothers trilogy, as in 1, 2, and 3, as well as Super Mario World, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, as well as, um, I, well, last, uh, I've also played GoldenEye, and whether you guys believe it or not, last Thursday I did get to play Star Wars Shadows of the Empire for the first time. I'm not joking, people. It's true. So anyways, um, um, so yeah, I've also played Super Smash Bros. 4, and I bet you're all wondering whether or not I did actually get to play Super Smash Bros. Melee. Well, yes, I did play Super Smash Bros. Melee. So anyways, um, since now then, my tributes towards Roger Reese and Satoru you want to both done out of the way. Um, let's talk about another piece of sad news I have to bring up. Now, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. All right. <clears throat> In case you guys haven't noticed, um, this Thursday, Blip will be closing down. Now, for those who don't know what Blip is, um, it's basically similar to sites like YouTube. Vimeo, Dailymotion, Zipcast, or any of those places. And um, it's a shame that Blip has to close down. However, this is not the first time that something bad would dare happen to Blip. Last year, there was what we, we reviewers would call it a Blipocalypse, whereas um, a lot of great reviewers have to leave Blip. And I have to say this, that for those who... who who have been having, who have had a blip account for a long time, I just want to say to you guys that, um, that I'm really, really sorry about what's going to happen when it comes to blip for you guys, and I hope you guys do better on either YouTube, Vimeo, Dailymotion, or wherever you guys might be. Heck, when I first started working on my review show back then, be called Teddy's Reviews, the original plan was to make it a watchable, not just over here on YouTube, but also on Blip as well. But then, after the apocalypse kicked in, and and seeing that I haven't got any major copyright issues worldwide, this is the moment where I would stick with nowhere but YouTube. Anyways, um, yeah. And um, since now I got that out of the way, um, I've got something that I have to address. Now I noticed that um. When you guys first heard the news that I fired Azuchi Guardian, I'm pretty sure some of you were like happy, whereas a lot of you people, other people on the other hand, feel upset. Now, I bet you're all wondering, why would I fire such a brilliant editor like Azuchi Guardian? Well, there have been multiple different factors on why I would ever fire a, a great editor like Azuchi Guardian. However, the biggest reason on why I would ever fire Azuchi Guardian from helping me edit would be, of course, he added in certain jokes that were just so unnecessary to be in my to, to be in my Return to Neverland review. Either they were just too mature, or it oh, <clears throat> either the jokes that he would all the irrelevant jokes that he would put into my Return to Neverland review were just either too mature or just playing rude towards the viewers. And I feel sorry for those guys, even inc including for Animat and Huey Toonmore. And um, another good reason why I would ever fire Zuchi Guardian would be, of course, the fact that he would not even reveal the real names of all the people in the end credits. Now, I bet you're all wondering, what are the real names of all the people as seen in the real in the end credits? For Azuchi Guardian, is Sebastian Ojeda. I, I, I apologize 
for revealing your real name to the public once again as Uchi Guardian. Anyways, for the Physic Werewolf, it's Rachel Greenwald. For Big Boss Eurellis, it's Eurell Wheatley. And I gotta say, there's people, he's not as mean as what Azuchi Guardian always says he is. Um, trust me when I say this, people, that when you guys do get to know Eurell more, you will see that he means no harm. And, um, and for Kyle the Red Man, it's, um, Kyle Picone. And for Bear Rimshaw, I'm pretty sure you guys should all know my real name right now. It's down below. For those who can't read and have only watched my videos through RowdyC.com so far, um, my real name is actually Teddy Macedo. And, um, yeah, so another good reason why I would ever consider firing the Zuchi Guard from editing in the first place would be, of course, in the Cody Vega episode of Sonic Adventure, he made me say that I'm a fat fag. Well, guess what, people? I am not gay, okay? I am 100% straight. Anyways, um, another good reason why I would consider firing Azuchi Guardian in the first place would be, of course, um, he would often false report about me and certain people for no reason. I mean, there, there have been a couple of lies he said. Like, for example, um, in his latest episode of Unholy Updates, there are some lies he said about me once again. Like, for example, one thing he lied about would be, of course, when he said that let, when I said that let trolls be trolls. Well, guess what, people? In reality, I have never said let trolls be trolls at all. I never, besides, I never accepted trolling on every social media site I use, regardless if it's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Skype, or whatever. I never allow anyone, I never accept any form of trolling at all. However, what I was really trying to say right here is that everyone is entitled to their opinion, to their own opinions. And another thing he also lied, Azuchi Gardner also lied about would be, of course, when he said that, um, that, 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 that my editing for the next episode of Casual, for, for all future episodes of Casual Reviews with Ramshot is going to suck. Now, Azuchi Guardian, let me ask you this. Did you even watch The Great Gamer Boy Fan? Because if you haven't, I highly recommend you to go shut the fridge up and go watch it for yourself. Oh, if it's that you can't find it on the search bar itself, the link to Nick's YouTube page is down in the description below. So anyways, um, on, on Nick's YouTube page, not only can you watch The Great Gamer Boy Fan, but also he's made some Sonic videos as well, including a movie based on Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2. Now, when I say that, I meant, like, now you know those, YouTube, those gaming YouTubers who would make, who would often make videos, who would make movies by using the video clips as seen in the, in, from, from the video games themselves. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to talk about right here. So anyways, um, an, another thing Azuchi Guardian also lied about would be, of course, when, I, when he said that I can't play Happy Birthday on the clarinet. Well, guess what, people? I can play Happy Birthday on the clarinet. One thing that you guys do not know about me, including you, Azuchi Guardian, watching this, is that I've been playing clarinet for over ten friggin' years. Yep, that's right, people. I've been playing the clarinet for ten friggin' years. I mean, I mean, here's why I would ever consider doing a birthday apology video to Jaime Toot in the first place. It all started way back in 2011, right? One day I was on ThatFilmWithCo.com, right, and yet though I was enjoying Anna for whatever he's got, and I was, and during that time I was waiting for animation look back Don Bluth to come out soon. Anyways, there was discovering some of the other reviewers on that same site, including Huey Tumor from Huey's Animated Movie Reviews, by watching the top 20 greatest animated villains on this countdown, as well as VG Retro 
fine see him guest star in the top in the top twenty greatest animated villain songs countdown and um and also then there was Morgan Ledger who whom I first knew him more as a film buff when he also guest starred in Huey Tomorrow's top twenty greatest animated villain songs countdown. And then there was Mr. Code himself, of course. And then there was South Jersey Sam, who I first knew him by watching his top 13 worst songs countdown and his review of Schindler's List. And then there was also High Me-Tude, which in this case, the first ever video I did get to watch that's made by High Me-Tude would be his review of the Land Before Time TV series, as well as some appearances in fantasy movie memories. Anyways, um, when I first, so anyways, um, but then fast forwarding towards Christmas and th towards the Christmas season in 2011, I remember when, when I did get to watch Adam Matt's reviews, Arthur Christmas, there I was listening to a song that Jaime Toots sang, which is which in this case is called "Put a Little Love in Your Christmas," which in this case it ended up being not only my favorite Christmas song that Jaime Tude has ever done, but also it's my favorite song that Jaime Tude has ever sang. Period. So, anyways, um, but then one day, um, I was when when I finally once my Facebook page has already been created. This is the moment where I did somehow get in touch with Jaime Tude. Yet, though, um, Jaime Tude and I both did get to chat with each other. Anyways, and on the on the on the when I by the time when I just first came to Westbrook, um, this is the moment where my Animatis top ten worst films based on a cartoon first came out. And, and Jaime Tude was did get to make a cameo in the end of that video. Spoiler alert, people. Anyways, um, and then um, but then one fa one day, um, Jaime Tude for some reason blocked me. And considering the fact that I've been bugging him, which keep in mind, people, that goes for you, Jaime Tude, that I wasn't like trying to hurt him at all. I'm just trying to tell him that. He can bring up valid points, and, and he's and he's even got great taste in music. And um, but then last year, last year just right after Mike Janik has finally released a Cinema Royale episode based on the Dr. Seuss films, um, when I was when I finally finished up watching that same episode um of Cinema Royale, I remember seeing Mike ask Animat, Jaime Tude, and Morgan. What is the best, and what is the best Dr. Seuss film they've ever seen, and what is the worst Dr. Seuss film they've ever seen? Yet, though I've heard, and results were, I'm, for Animat, he said that the best, that best Dr. Seuss movie that he's ever seen would be, of course, considering the fact that he's not seen Horton and Here's a Who, it would go to Ron Howard's The Grinch. I'm not joking, people. Animat really, really, really likes. Ron Howard's The Grinch. So anyways, but then Jaime Tude said that his best Seuss movie would go for 14 years who, but then Morgan would say f his four magic words, read the fucking books. S apologies for the language, people. Anyways, but then when Emma Jaime Tude and Morgan all got asked what is the worst Seuss movie they've ever seen, that would go for the can they had. So anyways, um, after I already finish up watching the Cinema Royal episode of the Dr. Seuss films, not only did I thank Mike for making that episode happen, but also I've, but also I've asked, I've, to, I've made him, I try to make him ask Animat, Jaime, and Morgan four questions that Mike should have asked them in the episode. What is the best Seuss cartoon that they've ever seen? And what is the worst Seuss cartoon that they've ever seen, as well as what is the best Seuss game they've ever played, and what is the worst Seuss game they've ever played. When I say Seuss cartoon, not only am I talking, not only can that include 
any of the TV specials, but also this includes the animated short film adaptation of Fortune Hatches the Egg, as well as as well as TV shows like The Wubbulous World of Dr. Seuss, and The Cat in the Hat knows a lot about that. And when I say Seuss game, not only can that include those released on either console or handheld, but also PC games and games released on smartphones and tablets can also be included as well in this case. So anyways, um, luckily, um, Mike made Animat accept my friend request, but then, Mike, Jane, but then Jaime too did tell Mike that, um, that, that he blocked me because, um, I've been bugging him and I did try to apologize to him. But then one, on one faithful day I created a Skype account, right? And, um, and yet, though, I was just trying to get in touch with Jaime Toot again, but then, um, luckily he and I both did get a chat, and I'm really, really glad that Jaime Toot really likes the Star Wars prequels. But then one day, um, I, I Skype called him, and for some reason, um, Jaime Toot was kind of disappointing me, like, so much so that he would even tell Mike Janik about the, in about the incident that happened. Look, to answer, now, to answer your question, Mike Janik, on why I would ever get in touch with Jaime Toot on Skype, that's because I, not only am I trying to thank him for what a great influence he can be, but also, um, but also, I, I also want to tell him that he's got great taste in music. Well, I, well, whether you guys believe it or not, I did try to ask him to write, tell me write the theme song for casual reviews of Spare Rimshot. However, um, unfortunately during that time, he got busy with other stuff, which is understandable, and I can totally respect that. So anyways, um, another, another thing that Azuchi Guardian also lied about would be, of course, when he said that, um, oh, right. When he said that when I said my April vlog, that I'll be collaborating with Huey Tumor. That's not also true either. I've never, I've never said that I would collaborate with Huey Tumor. Besides, Huey is supposed to be spelled H-E-W-Y, not H-U-G-E-Y. I mean, don't get me wrong, people. I would love to do a video project with Huey one day. So anyways, um... Another thing that he also lied about would be, of course, um, when he said that, when he said that I lied about the, the special things I got in the end credits of Huey's animated movie, Reviews Winds of Change. That, I, technically, I was not lying. I was actually telling the truth. And the only reason why I got that special thanks in the end credits is due to the fact that I pledged five dollars to Huey to more on Patreon. And if he if you guys still don't believe me about the special thanks I got, I'm going to prove it to you guys right here on my phone. Bad film. Here we go. Ah, here we go. That people, um, oops. Here we go. 
See, basically what you guys are seeing right here, that that here is basically what I like to call the truth. See, guys, told you I I got a special thanks in the end credits for Huey's animated movie reviews. Well, that's because of, due to a five dollar pledge for Patreon. Now, let me ask you this, Azuchi Guardian: If you have a Patreon page, if you have a Patreon page right now. Then why would you say that I lied about my special thanks to the credits? Because I already just showed you guys right now the proof. So, anyways, um, another thing he also lied to about would be, of course, when he said that um, that I had bad sex with Satan. Well, guess what, people? I I don't do sex with the, with guys at all. The only people who I would have sex with would be, of course, girls when I get their consent. However, when I do not get consent to have sex, I would just respect their feelings the way they are. So anyways, um, another thing that Azuchi Garden also lied about would be, of course, when he said that I'm not a real brony. Well, technically, I am a real brony. Well, the reason, keep in mind, people, the reason why I became a brony is all thanks to the fact that I did include My Little Pony characters in epic battles, in the sequels, that is. So, anyways, and then another thing Azuchi also lied about would be, of course, um, all right, would be, of course, when he said that Anima would hate me for liking Clyde with a chance of meatballs. Technically, that's not true either. I've never seen Anima do any hate videos about me for liking Clyde with a chance of meatballs or stuff like that. Technically, he can respect people's opinions. And when he was working on the top five best and worst animated films of 2014, when he did get to look back at his top five best and worst animated films of 2013, he said stuff that he probably didn't mean, and besides should not said either. Like, for example, when Animat included Proclaim Clyde with, with the Chance of Meatballs to be the number one worst ever animated film of 2013, he did say this, that anybody who supports the movie should be ashamed to themselves and, re and even reconsider their life values. Mm. Well, either way, I'm, I'm still going to appreciate Sony Pictures animation even up to this day. Now, look, Animat, don't take this the wrong way, okay? You're still a great reviewer, and if you don't like Cloud with the Chance of Meatballs, I can totally respect your opinions. It's just that, well, when you said that, that anybody who supports the Cloud you films should be ashamed to themselves and reconsider their life values, that insulted a lot of people, including me. Now, I'm not saying you're wrong for hating Cloud with the Chance of Meatballs, which besides, I can totally respect your opinions, Animat. So anyways, um, when Animat was, was doing his top five best and worst animated films of 2014, at least he was able to respect, his respect pe other people's opinions, although I do find the worst list to be fine the way it is, as my what is I think about the best list, I will say this, although I, although I do have to agree with Anima that How to Train Your Dragon 2 is a great sequel, I think the number one animated film of 2014 really should have gone to the Lego movie. And before I get any backlash for saying that, let me explain why for once, okay? Um, the reason why... The reason why the Lego movie would be my favorite animated film that came out in 2014 is, is due to its Roger Rabbit-esque style. Not only that, but also what makes the movie great would be, of course, its witty, cle witty clever, and funny, and cartoony humor. And, um, and also, during the aftermath for Animat's classic reviews, Where the Dead Go to Die, Animat did say this, that he does respect people's opinions. And, um, yeah, and also, one time when I was on the Animation Look Back Facebook page, I've seen someone ask Animat whether or not it was wrong to say that for him that he liked 
Justin's movie and anime did say this on, on his Facebook page, the animation look like one that is, that if it's that he likes Justin's movie, he can totally respect that. And, um, yeah, and, let's see, ah, uh, yes, um, oh, right, um, now, Azuchi Guardian, before you can go make any more rant videos, before you can, before you can go make, do any more hate videos of me, let me say this, Azuchi Guardian, that look. I'm really, really sorry. Look, um, I, I, I know. I'm. Um, before you let me say this, Azuchi Guardian, that um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know why you would make more hate videos than me. But if it's that because, due to the fact that I fired you, look, Azuchi Guardian, I'm really, really sorry for firing you, man. I mean, it's it's just that well, and it's what you get. For ignoring all this negative feedback, and um, and I'm and I was ba I'm basically going to try to help. Now, Azuchi Guardian, let's just stop make let's just stop fighting with each other on the internet, and just wish each other the best of luck for our future projects we both may work on for for yourselves. Look. Besides Azuchi Guardian, um, there are a lot of good things that I can... There are a couple of things that I can acknowledge about you that you did right. Like, for example, um, I, I would, however... One thing that, that I can acknowledge that I will give you credit in doing something right would be, of course... I really would like to thank you, man, for thinking about me every single time whenever you see something either Disney-related or, in this case, Star Wars-related in that case. I also would like to acknowledge... I also would like to think... I also want to acknowledge you, Zuchi Guardian, that I really, really had fun doing the Star Wars Battlefront showdown in Cody and Vega and in Cody and Vincio. I also would like to acknowledge you... of how, um... Thanks for showing... Thank you for showing... Thank you for introducing me to the Lonely Goomba. I will say this is Uchi Guardian that I really enjoyed the Lonely Goomba and I I think whenever I watch him he's very very funny. Though when it comes to the Lonely Goomba, um he does kinda remind me of Count CGI. For those who don't know what Count who Count CGI is, he's basically the main villain of Huey's animated movie reviews, but basically best known for making peop making reviewers review bad computer animated movies. So anyways, um Azuchi Guardian, I also would like to acknowledge you some of, the, some of the things you got right when you helped me edit for casual reviews of Bear Rimshaw. Like, for example, you know the Iron Man joke, the part when Iron Man says, what, no, no applause when, when, I, when I did bring up Disney Infinity 2.0, my Disney Infinity review? I will say this, Azuchi Guardian, that that is a really good joke to give people... The idea that yes, that I'm that I'll be reviewing Disney Infinity 2.0. And Azuchi Guardian, even if you are even if you are no longer my editor for casual reviews of Bear Room Shot, I will still be reviewing Disney Infinity 2.0 soon. Only this time it will be it has been it will always be considered episode five of casual reviews of Bear Room Shot. I also would like to acknowledge you and um the what is love joke from my Return to Neverland review from the part from the scene when um when I pointed out that Jane and the Lost Boys were all um, trying to defeat the pirates. That joke the that the what is love joke that you put in my Return to Neverland review, I can I can totally understand and respect why you would put that in. As the pirates were in a lovable mood do just because, well, Jane and the Lost Boys were, were throwing treasure at the pirates. So anyways, um, so yeah, um, another thing, um, I also like to acknowledge you is that whenever you see something that you know that I obviously like, I really would like to thank you, Azuchi Guardian, for, um, for thinking about me every single time whenever we see, see 
something Disney related or stars related or something related to my religion. And um Azuchi Guardian, I'm really, really sorry for um, the backlash I've been giving you. Let's just stop making hateful videos. Let's just stop fighting on the internet and just wish each other the best of luck. Oh, by the way, Azuchi Guardian, I hope you do get to have a happy birthday this month. And, um... Yeah, um, and also, if you guys really, really do want to get a better idea on what the editing for future episodes, beginning with Casual Reviews with Bear Room Shot Episode 3 would look like, now named Casual Reviews with Bear Room Shot, what is a public apology, I highly recommend you guys to go check out Nick's YouTube page. The link to his YouTube page is down in the description below. Not only that, but also, um, but also, <sighs> Think when when you guys do think hear someone mention him talk about episode three, the public apology editorial. I want you guys to all think about what is the what do you guys consider to be the best sequel of all time? When I say best, uh, what is when I say best sequel, it can be either to an animated movie or a live or to a live action movie or to a book or or even to a video game. You name it, and it's all there. And also, um, and also, so yeah, um, it's about all I have to say. Oh, by the way, um, before I leave, let me say one more thing. Before any of you guys can go spam me with rants about me making longer videos, I want, let me say this, people that don't, whenever I do get to make longer videos like right now, don't think of as if I'm trying to bore you guys or anything like that. However, one thing that some of you would often misunderstand about why I would ever make longer videos would be, of course, the fact that, well, um, you guys need to want to be mindful about the fact that I have a lot of important things to talk to you about, to talk to you guys about. Well, that's all I have to say to you people. I hope you all keep having a great summer. And, um, and to anyone who's still, go who's still going to go to school in September, good luck on your first day of school next month.